Well, good evening, everyone. It's Dr. Shiva Ayadure. So we're going to be looking at a black pepper and how it affects digestive health. This is going to be a series that we're going to do on all the different ingredients in curry powder. So what is curry powder? Curry powder, you'll find out, is a medicinal spice mixture. The important thing is it's a mixture. It's not any one spice. It's a mixture. It's a combination of a number of components. And it's an essential component of diet across the Indian subcontinent. In fact, if you travel across Southeast Asia now, you'll find curry being used in Vietnam, parts of Indonesia, and the earliest use of this spice dates back at least to 2600 BC. Each part of India has its own version of curry powder spice. Now, the ingredients of curry powder, each one of those ingredients have multitude of medicinal properties. One of the tools, by the way, that I created called Your Body, Your System, which is a tool that's part of the warrior training program where those people want to support the educational institution, basically, that's developed over here online. You all can have also access to your body, your system, but you can figure out how you can actually make your own combination of curry that's right for you. You can see the different types of ingredients in curry powder. If you look here, there's dried red chilies, there's coriander, there's curry leaf, there's black peppercorn, which is what we're going to talk about. You take the peppercorn, you grind it. On the bottom over there, you have yellow mustard seeds, then you have fenugreek, you have turmeric, you have garlic, you also have a ginger, cinnamon, fennel, cumin, right? So it's a whole set of spices that are combined. And if you look at each one of those spices, they all have different medicinal effects. So now black pepper, some people consider the king of spices. And it's fascinating. Research shows that black pepper increases the bioavailability of turmeric. Traditional medicine knew this for many, many thousands of years. Now it's, what, it's native. It grows in the Western Ghats of the South Indian Peninsula. I've actually walked through those jungles and I've seen pepper grow. It's quite extraordinary. It's prescribed as medicine in the traditional Indian medicine for over 4,000 years and one of the active compounds in black pepper plays a very key role in gastrointestinal functionality. Now, how many papers are written, right? So if you go to the scientific literature right now, if you were to go to PubMed and you typed in black pepper, you'd find that there's 1,376 research papers written on black pepper, and that's going across 34 clinical trials. It's been studied over the last 76 years. So now many of you know that for my PhD work at MIT, there's a technology that I created, which is called Cytosol. And what Cytosol allows us to do, so if you look at all those 1,400 papers, how would anyone have the time to go through all those papers, understand how black pepper really works, let's say on a subset, something called digestive health, right? Because black pepper affects many, many different molecular pathways. So how do we do that? So Cytosol, as you see in this diagram, is we're able to actually take thousands of papers in the public domain that your tax dollars and my tax dollars funded, and using that knowledge, we're able to extract the relevant papers, in this case, having to do with digestive health out of those 14 papers and from those papers we are we then extract the chemical reactions of how black pepper works on digestive health so now you have all these chemical agents and with cytosol we're able to not only just connect those lego pieces together but also mathematically model those pieces and interconnect them i wanted to let you know that we use the technology here we've helped many many companies over the last 16 years a lot of smart innovative companies but we decided with all the mathematical models we've created why don't we try to use this to compute the best product we could think of from the science out there for reducing pain and inflammation, pain and discomfort. And that resulted in us creating MV25 using Cytosol. We're going to have more products that are going to be coming, but let me just show you what MV25 is about for those of you who haven't heard about it. But this is using Cytosol in a beneficial way, not to just do research, but find combination therapies. Hi, I'm Barbara Ann. My hands would cramp up so that I couldn't hold cards or knit or crochet. And they would go like that. Not have to use this when I played cards with my grandkids. Then I started taking that MV25. After a bit, I was able to hold cards in my hand. Very, very little cramping, hardly at all anymore. MV25. Hi, my name is Sandy. I'm a Taekwondo instructor. I tore my ACL during Taekwondo. I had a lot of pain and limited mobility. I've been taking the MV25 for about six months now. After the first week, I noticed a big difference. After the second week, almost literally no pain. My name is Jeremy and I suffer from a lower back problem. Hurt my back 
at work years ago and I can go to the chiropractor, do all kinds of different things and nothing seems to help. And I decided to try MV25. I didn't notice a difference immediately, but within a few days the pain went away and it stayed away. I've continued to take it and even when I do things that I shouldn't do, it seems to go away a lot quicker than it ever did before. It's clean food certified, it's made in the US. If you go to vashiva.com right on the shop, you'll click there or you can go right to mv25.life either way. And then from there, you can click on the bottle and you can order. If you buy six bottles, you get six bottles for free. Please take advantage of it because first of all, it's going to help you. It's going to help our movement. And it really supports the fact that we want to take science-based approaches to natural products. So when we look at black pepper, as we look at any of these foods, foods are composed of many different kinds of chemical components, essential oils. So 2% of black pepper is essential oils, fiber, 5%, proteins, 9%, 50% is carbohydrates, fat is 15%, moisture is 11%, and ash is another 7%. So that's what black pepper is composed of. Macronutrients, that's what we're looking at here. The other piece is the micronutrients. So two sets of micronutrients on this slide is alkaloids, four different kinds of alkaloids. And then you have three kinds of flavonoids. So what are the biological effects? It has an inhibition of drug metabolizing system. It's a protective effect on cytotoxicity by carcinogens. Anti-fertility effects on the reproductive system. Anti-inflammatory, anti-thyroid activity, thermogenic action, a growth stimulatory effect on melanocytes. Antioxidant influence. During diabetes, induce oxidative stress. In carcinogens, it induce oxidative stress. In high for diets, induce oxidative stress. It has effects which we're going to focus today on the gastrointestinal system. It has effects on the gastric mucosa, anti-diarrheal property, We'll talk about that anti-mutagenic and anti-cancer effects. Another very powerful aspect of piperine. Modulation of bioavailability of therapeutic drugs and other phytochemicals. What are the health benefits of pepper? So health benefits are looking at the overall macro level effects. Lots of many different effects. So I'll walk through gangrene, uric, diarrhea, abdominal tumors, constipation, sunburn, oral abscesses, tooth decay, liver disorders, pyretic, which means increases heat, epilepsy, joint pain, lung diseases, insomnia, insect bites, indigestion, hernia, heart disease. All of these are coming from the research. Now I want to take a little bit of time just to look at your digestive system. So here's your body. Your digestive system is really the food conversion part of your body. So the digestive system is composed of hollow organs and solid organs. In Chinese medicine, they call them the yin and the yang organs. But the hollow organs include your mouth, your esophagus, which is hollow, your stomach, which is hollow, the small intestines, your large intestines, and the anus. These are all called hollow organs. But the solid organs are the liver, the pancreas, and the gallbladder. So when you're looking at your digestive system, it's all of those pieces so you have a number of components and they're all connected together which is what gives you your digestive system a good digestive system takes food and pulverizes it to give you as much nutrients as possible create as little waste as possible right that would be a very powerful digestive system now we're going to look at how black pepper affects the digestive system. First of all, black pepper affects the hollow organs as well as the solid organs of the digestive system. So black pepper affects the hollow organs and mouth. One of the things that black pepper does, it increases saliva. Very, very important for oral health, but extremely important for digestion. It also increases the salivary amylase that supports digestion right at the mouth level while your teeth are chewing stuff, breaking down it mechanically. Amylase is important to start the digestive process. Now, the other hollow organ next to your mouth, in the stomach, that's where pepper increases the production of stomach acid. If you're eating a lot of protein, if you're eating foods, you want things like protein particularly, you want the black pepper because you want the acid released to break down that pepper. Extremely important. The other thing is black pepper also increases the activity of digestive enzymes, right? Inside your intestines. Right now, the solid organs it stimulates the liver to produce bile, right? And finally, the pancreas, black pepper also affects the pancreas. It increases the activity of lipase, and that lipase breaks down fat. It increases the activity of trypsin, 
and chymotrypsin that break down protein. So let's look at now at the molecular level. What happens when you actually eat black pepper? What's actually going on? Well, one of the things here is black pepper increases lipase. Light comes from lipid, which is fat, right? So lipase is the enzyme. ASC, whenever you see that, that means it's an enzyme, is the enzyme that breaks down fat. So black pepper increases pancreatic lipase and intestinal lipase. So again, remember, one of the things that black pepper does is, think about black pepper enhances the effect of other things. So black pepper increases more lipase activity, which means your pancreas puts out more lipase as well as your intestines. So how does it do that? Now, triglycerides constitute 90% of the dietary fat. If you ever eat meat, and if you think about the fat, that's triglycerides. And the enzyme lipase, which is secreted by the pancreas and intestines, converts the type triglycerides into fatty acids and monoglycerides. So breaks them down into these components. So for example, the omega-3s and the almost omega-6s, which people talk about, and you want to get them from fatty fish, are the fatty acids. But if you have triglycerides, you need the lipase. It's like a lipase, think about it like a knife that cuts up those triglycerides into smaller important fatty acids. So that's what the enzyme lipases do. And what piperine does is you're noticing here on the left here, my cursor is a little bit small, but the piperine enhances the activity of both the lipases to increase fat digestion. So here's pepper. So here's the cell wall, right? So here's triglycerides. Again, 90% of dietary fats are triglycerides. They have this long chain here. What happens is the pepper supports pancreatic lipase as well as intestinal lipase, which means you get more of them being created and literally cuts up these triglycerides into fatty acids and it cuts them up into monoglycerides and this is what's called fat digestion. So the key takeaway is that pepper, particularly the piperine and pepper, increases the ability for your body to break down triglycerides. And you're seeing that at the molecular level. Next thing is, it also increases amylase activity, right? So lipase is to fats, but amylase breaks down carbohydrate digestion. This is why if you go to an Italian restaurant, what do they do? You have your pasta, they say, hey, would you like some fresh pepper? And this is how, this is why that works. So you have, now in the mouth, you have salivary amylase that converts dietary carbohydrates into the polysaccharides, into the dextrin, sucrose, lactose, and maltose. So if you eat some pasta or you eat your pizza, right? In your mouth, the amylase activity starts converting them. And what you can see here is so dietary carbohydrates, if you look on the left here, oops, let me make it a little bit bigger, sorry about that. Very nice diagram, but we have some to help you. So if you look on the left here, you have dietary carbohydrates, salivary alpha amylase. So pepper in your mouth will increase the production of more alpha amylase. So it'll help break down right away in your mouth. And now you get these polysaccharides, dextrin, sucrose, lactose, and maltose. These are these sugars. So in the small intestine, pancreatic amylase converts these complex sugars. You don't have glucose yet. You have these complex sugars into glucose, galactose, and fructose. The simple sugars are then absorbed into the bloodstream. So here you have alpha amylase, but also pepper affects, supports Pancreatic, pancreatic alpha amylase. So these complex sugars from your stomach to your small intestines are broken down into monosaccharides, glucose and galactose and fructose. And therefore you get active transport to the intestinal lining into your bloodstream. So the pepperine enhances the activity of both amylases, two amylases, your salivary, in your mouth, the amylase, and the amylase in your pancreas, right? So you're getting a double whammy here. This is why traditional cultures like Italian cultures always go to the restaurant, they said you want some pepper because it's gonna increase the breakdown of the carbohydrates in your mouth into these complex sugars and then in your gut, in your small intestines into the simple sugars, all right? Now, the other piece is, so again, we're looking at each, just to let everyone know, there's three types of foods we're looking at, right? Or three types of components. You have fats, you have carbohydrates, and then you have proteins. So the fats, lipase is the enzyme for that. Carbohydrates, amylase. And then for proteins, you have two different kinds of, uh, you have a variety of enzymes. So you have, I mean, chemicals, you have hydrochloric acid, Acid. You have pepsin, you have trypsin and chymotrypsin. These are very important to breaking down protein, extremely important. And you want to have enough of those. Again, I want to emphasize, I recommend everyone do research. A lot of MDs, right? A lot of them will diagnose people with digestive issues as, oh, you're not, you have too much acid. When in fact, a lot of research shows that they're misdiagnosing. It's actually, they don't have enough acid. So here we start with dietary proteins. So in dietary proteins, what the first step that happens, dietary proteins, 
proteins are denatured. What does denaturing mean? Denaturing means they're hydrolyzed. If you take an egg, if you take an egg and you drop an egg into your frying pan, remember where it's all gel-like, you can see through the whites, and then when it becomes white, that's called denaturing. The protein structure literally changes conformation that's called, so when you have the see-through egg yolk and it becomes the egg white, that's called denaturing. Heat does that. But proteins are denatured and hydrolyzed in the stomach by stomach acids and the enzyme pepsin. So when you go to the mouth, so you don't really have a lot of acid in your mouth, but in the stomach is where you have pepsin and hydrochloric acid. And guess what? Pepper and peppery enhances, again, the hydrochloric acid and the pepsin. So right away, it helps you denature and get partially hydrolyzed protein. So let me bring back the diagram here. So by the way, if you go to the supplement store, you'll notice some of the supplements will say hydrolyzed protein, which means they've done the pre-denaturing. The idea is that your body can absorb it better. But again, you have the dietary proteins that go through your mouth. You're chewing, chewing, chewing. They come to your stomach. You eat pepper with the protein, the pepsin, and the hydrochloric acid. Are, you have more of them by the pepper, and then you get the hydrolyzation of the protein. Step one. The other thing is the pancreatic enzymes. Now your pancreas kicks in, and trypsin and chymotrypsin, as you can see here, break down those denatured protein into smaller peptides. This is no different than you have, you know, if you ever go chopping a tree, you chop the tree down, that's like the hydrolyzation. Then you have to use the pancreatic enzyme to start cutting them into small pieces. So that's what's happening here. The pancreatic enzymes use trypsin and chymotrypsin to break down the denatured protein into small peptides, which are short chain proteins. And then they get further broken down into amino acids, which are the building blocks of pretty much everything you need in your body. And that occurs in the small intestines. So now you get small peptides and amino acids and these amino acids are sucked into your bloodstream. So remember, at the end of the day, the fatty acids are what you absorb into your bloodstream. That comes from fats, triglycerides. Then the carbohydrates ultimately are turned into sugars, which get absorbed. And then when it comes to protein, ultimately you're trying to create amino acids, which get absorbed. So literally, you're going through literally a manufacturing process. And you can see pepper enhances that process. So what that means is you get more bang for your buck when you add in pepper, all right? So when we look at black pepper, one of the tools that all of our Truth Freedom Health Warrior get is a tool called Your Body, Your System. So that's an engineering systems approach. It's a rediscovery of traditional systems of medicine. But you can see here that black pepper lowers vata, right? transport, conversion, and storage of different effects. So dosaging, how much should you take? So for cold and cough, there's different things. Again, this is from traditional medicine. You can make a paste of black pepper, right? Around 10 to 15 black pepper seeds, 50 grams of ginger, 50 grams of garlic and butter. And this is from Takuri et al. And it's been published. So pepper, ginger, and garlic and butter. It's a very traditional remedy that's used throughout India, but that has a very powerful effect on lowering coughs and colds. Pepper as for increase of bioavailability of anti-convalescent drug. What that means is if you add pepper to other drugs you're taking, it actually increases your bioavailability. So you have to know that if you're eating a lot of pepper and you're taking other drugs, it can even have, it can enhance that drug's effect. So in this case, you're looking at Pitnaik said about 20 milligrams of pepperine have been known to increase the bioavailability of anticonvulsant drugs. Black pepper for inflammation, five to 20 milligrams of piperine, that's taslim and that's piperine, which is the high extracted form of black pepper. And black pepper for diabetes, remember diabetes is an issue where you have problems with your body's ability to metabolize sugar, right? And so 300 milligrams per kg. So if you're set, let's say you're 60 kilograms, which is about 122 pounds, right? So you want about 300 milligrams per kg, which mean, which would mean about in grams, right? So it's quite a bit of the leaf extract. That's Kaleem 2005. So in conclusion, black pepper is a versatile spice that helps digestive health, immune health, cardiovascular health, and it also enhances the bioavailability availability of other foods. The last piece is probably one of the most important things. That's a key takeaway. Black pepper increases bioavailability. That's why, because it increases, it enhances, as we look at the next bullet, the digestive system. It increases acid production in the stomach. It increases bile production in the liver. It increases the activity of digestive enzymes, amylase in the mouth and pancreas for carbohydrate digestion, lipase for pancreas and, and the pancreas and intestines for fat digestion, trypsin and chymotrypsin, and the pancreas for protein digestion. So there you go, black pepper from curry and digestive health. Anyway, thank you everyone. Be well, thank you.